So we're here today with the father of wine country cuisine, Chef John Ash, which is uh, quite, you know, quite the big deal here in, in Sonoma County. So it's an honor to, to, to be talking to you, Chef John. And, um, you know, you're more than a chef. I think it's important to mention that you are a radio, sh a radio show host, a TV host, an award-winning author. I mean, and on top of that, you, you started one of the most uh, famous restaurants here in Sonoma County and known really around the world. So um, welcome and thank you, huge thank you for, for joining us today. Um, I know I, I kind of just gave you everyone just a little bit of a, a, a bullet point of, of what, what Chef John has done, but I would love, Chef John, if you could um, take uh, several minutes to give us a little bit more of your history. Um, more of your background, maybe, maybe you know how you how how you studied and and where you studied and how you became a business owner, and maybe you can kind of go into a little bit of your biography. I'd be glad to. Um, so I I never thought I would end up being a chef. I um, my whole life was going in other directions, and that's true of a lot of people in the culinary arts. They are in one area and then suddenly they find food and cooking and those things and it's, it becomes all encompassing for them. They, it all started with me uh, on a ranch in Colorado. I lived with my grandparents for uh, the early years of my life. And uh, one of the things I had to do, this is what planted the seed in my mind. One of the things I had to do was to help my grandmother uh, prepare food for meals for the, the hands who worked on the ranch. And uh, as I say, I think that planted the seed because she was this amazing cook. She never used recipes or any of those things. Literally, I, I'm sort of showing my age, on the ranch, we didn't have gas stoves or any of that stuff. She cooked on a wood stove, baked in a wood oven, did all of that stuff. But she was so amazing, the things that she would put together. And it seemed like such a magical thing to me that uh, I sort of never got over it. I, to jump forward, when I went to college, I, uh, again, I always loved to cook because of my association with my grandmother. Uh, but when I went to college, I studied fine arts. I was a painter. And somewhere along the line, I knew that I would never make a living as a painter. Very few people do. Uh, but I found that everything I ever wanted to do with paint on a canvas, I could do with food on a plate. Plus, you got to eat it, which was a benefit. Plus, a double plus is that bad uh, food, if you've prepared something didn't turn out, it goes away, you forget about it. Bad art, unfortunately, um, as a way of hanging around my mother before she passed away, had all these god awful paintings that I had done. And I would tell her constantly, would you just take those and burn them? But she never did. Uh, so when she passed away, I did. So that was the deal. But that was, that was the direction I was headed. I'm saying all of this stuff because you never know in life what happens. You're sort of going down one road and then suddenly something comes along and you end up going off on a different direction. So when I graduated from college, I went to work for Del Monte Foods, if, if you know who they are, the canned food people, developing new food products, not so much from the kitchen standpoint, but looking for opportunities from a marketing standpoint. And I did that for five or six years. And uh, it was fun. I learned a lot about big food. Uh, but they you know, are kind of a slow moving company and all of that stuff. So I saved up my money. And in those days, back in the mid 60s, early 70s, uh, the temple of great cooking in the world was France. And so I saved up my money, quit working at Del Monte and went to France to, to, to kind of do cooking, never with the intention of doing it professionally, but doing it uh, uh, I, I thought it was a way that I could, you know, pursue cooking, which I like doing a lot, and also get into the culture, get to know people much more easily, and all of that. So I did that, and was lucky enough to end up working for a uh, 
a little inn in the north part of Burgundy. And I was there for about a year. And what changed my life forever was it was the kind of place I was a kumi, a, a slave in the kitchen there. And, uh, but what we would do is every morning, very early in the morning, go to the market and pick out the very best things we could find and then bring them back and decide what we were going to, to do with them that day. The menu changed every day. And it was such a magical experience that it, uh, uh, when I came back to America, I pursued that. And so went to work for some restaurants, uh, did a couple of things. I, I also, while this was going on, I was a freelance medical illustrator at University of California, San Francisco. So during the week, and so during the week I could do some art and on weekends I would do cooking. I had a little catering company that was, that was kind of fun. So I really put together the two things that really mattered most of my life. So to end this long dissertation, uh, I had always loved Sonoma County. I lived in San Francisco then and would come to Sonoma County as often as I could. Sonoma County was like, uh, was like Burgundy where I had gone to uh, work for the family there. Uh, it was filled with the most amazing producers of uh, produce and dairy, cheese, meats, all of that kind of stuff, fishing. Uh, but most of that got, in those days, there weren't any good restaurants in really in, in Sonoma. I hate to say that, but there weren't. And so I had a winemaker friend of mine who said to me, I'm gonna take you to the best restaurant in Santa Rosa. So we did, we went there for lunch one day and it was in an area called Railroad Square, which then, not Railroad Square, I'm sorry, Courthouse Square. Uh, and it's where the original courthouse was. So all the lawyers were there and this was a place, I won't name the restaurant. This was a place that all the lawyers would go to and it was dark wood paneling. And of course, in those days, everybody smoked and it was uh, awful. But the thing that hit me was uh, this was in the middle of summertime and they were serving canned vegetables on their plates. And I said, you know, and it just, out of, I was struck by lightning. I, I said, I could be a, a big fish in a small pond here. So eventually I moved to Sonoma County and worked in restaurants and then I opened my restaurant, John Ash and Company, back in 1980. And it's still going strong now. Yeah, I love how you connect your love of art to to the love of culinary because it they they're so similar in so many ways yeah. if it if done right. Um, and like you say, at the end you get to eat it, which yeah. you yeah. can't do that with most art. Trust no. me, I've tried. Um, <laughs> and so you know, I you you talked about your your history leading up to the restaurant. I'd love to just hear. Um, a little bit about maybe after the restaurant because you know you've you've gone and done a whole bunch of other stuff since then it's true i i was lucky enough i think as i mentioned i came to sonoma county at a good time because there weren't very many good restaurants here so it was a it was an easier time than it is now in which there are a lot of very talented chefs and restaurateurs here uh so you know i got noticed uh, Pretty early on, I, you know, the New York Times came and did a review and the Los Angeles Times and Gourmet Magazine and all of those kinds of things. So that all helped, you know, it sort of put me on the map. Uh, and so I worked at the restaurant for a number of years. And then slowly I said, you know, there's something else to life than coming here and spending 12 hours a day cooking and uh, trying to manage people and doing all that stuff. And so slowly I began to do other things. I began to take advantage of, and this is something I wanna to emphasize to everybody out there. It isn't just cooking in a restaurant when you get into that business. So I think my first big break came when I was able to, and I did this for about 15 years, would go to Japan for about, for at least a month uh, each, uh, each year to take their California food and wine. I was associated with a number of very good California wineries. And we would go do these kind of road shows all over Japan, uh, doing California food, serving California wines to kind of teach the Japanese about that. And of course, in the 
context of doing that, I learned so much about Japanese food and Japanese cooking, which is really very different than Western cooking uh, and really fell in love with it. But as a consequence of doing that, it also led me into writing and doing a few other things, uh, lecturing about uh, Japanese food, that kind of stuff. And it's just, again, it's one of those things, it's like I never thought I would do that. Uh, but this opportunity came along, I took it, and it changed my life. Yeah, thank you. We, we have some students that have some, some questions that they want to ask, but I'm going to take advantage of the fact that um, I'm co-hosting, so I'm going to ask the first question. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I want to know what a world-famous chef has for breakfast. So I'm curious, what did you have for breakfast this morning? You know, I've never been a big breakfast person, which is not a good thing, because we know that breakfast is the most important. Most meal. important. Uh, but typically what I'll do is something very simple, you know, yogurt. Uh, I love eggs. And so I'll typically poach or uh, saute an egg with something with it. And that's good protein and it keeps you, keeps your mind alert until lunchtime. Uh, and so that's, this morning what I had was a little yogurt, granola, and uh, some juice. Well, that's not bad. It's better than my Captain Crunch, that's for sure. <laughs> so, Chef Maya, uh, I'm wondering if you want to uh, kind of take the reins here and, and call out some of the students who have some questions that they want to ask. And then oh. we'll ask those students to feel free to turn your mic and your camera on and ask the question for John. All right, um, you guys can have your uh, camera on now. Turn on your camera and have your mics on. Uh, the first question is, uh, Taylor, your turn. Hi, um, so my question was, in the midst of this pandemic, what is your opinion based around how restaurants and places that have a lot to do with hospitality and tourism and just the whole culinary community. What is your opinion on how that was affected during the pandemic? Well, it's a really tough time, as you know. I mean, if you follow the news at all, a lot of restaurants, hotels, and other people who do things in the hospitality business have closed or at least temporarily, but many for good. So I, I think we're in a really tough time and not, not knowing where the epidemic is gonna go, uh, it, it, it makes it tough. It doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities in the hospitality business, but maybe it's not in restaurants or hotels. Instead, it's doing other things like doing what Chef May does, teaching people or uh, working uh, in places like hospitals and care homes and things like that. I hope it all changes. All right. Thank you, Taylor. That was an excellent question. Uh, Diego, you next. Um, well, hello, my name is Diego. My question is, what are three ingredients would you need to be a successful chef? Diego, I didn't quite hear that. Can you say it just a little bit louder? Yeah. What are three ingredients would you need to be a successful chef? The three ingredients. Oh, boy. Uh, that's, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, well, if you're not talking about food ingredients here, but you're talking about things that are necessary. One of them, certainly the one is, and I'm sure you've all heard it, is that you have to work hard. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of an unforgiving business. Uh, so that's one, I think maybe the most important thing is it's, it's not an easy go. But having said that, it can be very rewarding at the same time. The second thing is a love of, if you're, especially if you're pursuing food, a love of food and the willingness to try food from other cuisines and try techniques that maybe you don't know anything about to get away from the same old, same old stuff that many of us have a, a tendency to kind of fall into. And I think the third thing is you got to like people. Uh, you you got to see it as something fun to help motivate and guide and work with people uh, because the, and I'll say it from a restaurant standpoint, the restaurant business is like a dance. 
and when it works, it really works wonderfully. Uh, so that's what you're looking for, is that dance. I don't know whether you saw the Michael Jordan thing, the last dance, but he talked about it in terms of basketball. Well, the same thing occurs in the hospitality business too. Interesting topic here. Um, all right, thank you, Diego. And next, George, you're on the mic. Hello, um, my question is, how important is hospitality and tourism to a local area? Hospitality and tourism important to the local community. Oh, what does it that, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. For our community here in Sonoma County and in the wine country generally, it's probably the most important thing, uh, hospitality and uh, the restaurant businesses are, are the most important money makers for this. So that's why it's hit us especially hard when places have had to close or they've had their hours and terms of operation uh, curtailed, uh, but it's, it's terribly important. What, what we all feel, and I don't know whether you guys feel it too, is that there is something growing in the background. As soon as we get a handle on this pandemic, uh, you're gonna see the biggest explosion in uh, the hospitality business in terms of jobs and activities and all of that stuff, because people are just craving it. They're tired of being locked up at home uh, or being uh, not being able to do things. So uh, I can't think of a more important thing in our part of the world. Well, thank you, Chef John, and thank you, jo uh, George, for the highlight uh, on this topic. It's such an important time for us to really support our local community. All right, next will be Zachary. Zachary Enrich, what uh, will be your questions to Chef John Ash? Oh, uh, what difference did COVID-19 change to your restaurant and hospitality? Well, it's a, it's a good question. As I mentioned, uh, the restaurant, uh, and we have, at, we have the restaurant, John Ashton Company. We also have a hotel, the Vintners Inn, which is about 90 rooms. We have an event center, uh, which uh, made a lot of money, did a lot of business for catering special events and things like that. And then recently added, uh, just at the wrong time, a, uh, a spa. Uh, oh, you guys, oh, wow. Uh, so that. all of those things were there. All of them are shut tight right now. So it meant that a lot of people were furloughed. Some people were let go. So COVID-19 uh, really disrupted our business mightily. So that's why we hope, we hope that uh, things will work, that vaccines will work, that we will get that uh, herd immunization that uh, everyone is talking about so that we can open up again, but it's been really hard. Thank you. Uh, next, Christina. My question is, what do you think is the ingredients for success in a career of hospitality? I think uh, Chef John Ashley addressed that one. Yeah, uh, so I, but I can say it to you again very simply. I think it's work hard, like people, you know, like, uh, like to be around both your fellow employees as well as customers, as guests and that stuff. Those are two of the most important things. And finally, uh, it's an art form. It really is. I think that's what, as I mentioned in the beginning, that's what got me involved in it was that whole idea of that how you uh, entertain people, how you take care of them, how you do all of that is a real art. Thank you for reiterate that uh, questions again. Uh, Julia. Hi, um, I just wanted to thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Well, thanks, that's nice of you to say. I wonder, uh, I had a question. <laughs> you have to speak a little louder, Julia. Okay, um, I wanted to ask you, I can't remember what I was gonna ask you. She got so excited, she yeah. forgot her questions. Don't ask me anything. That's okay. <laughs> I had a question. I can't remember it now. My favorite food. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I had a question. Okay. okay so, uh, 
you had to like do you ever eat out at different restaurants and what kind of restaurants do you eat at? oh of course i eat out as much as i can part of it is to steal ideas from them you know if i go out and try something that i really like and oh, i think i'm gonna do that or maybe put a twist on it or something i'm being i'm teasing about that a little bit but it's always fun to see what other people are doing and my i think the restaurants i like to go to most are ethnic restaurants of any kind so whether it's asian or latin or any of those, because those are things i only know a little bit about so i always go and learn uh, when i go to them so yeah well i think one of the great joys in life is going out and spending time with friends and family and having good food yeah well that's great thank you julia robert you're next Hi, Chef. My question for you was, what are the career opportunities for when things open back up again? The kind of uh, opportunity that once that's available once the pandemic is oh. Well, as I mentioned, there is this growing, you can feel it. Uh, people can't wait to get back to going to restaurants, to traveling, to go, staying in hotels, going on cruises, doing all of that kind of stuff. So the opportunities are gonna be immense. And as soon as we get our, ha our hand on this, there are gonna be so many opportunities for you all uh, to do anything you wanna do. And again, it's not just cooking in restaurants, but it's traveling, it's uh, uh, learning about new cuisines. Pop-up restaurant with uh, Chef May. Uh, chef May has told me she's gonna do a pop-up restaurant here, which would be great fun for you guys to run and manage. And it will teach you almost more than anything uh, of the realities of doing one of those things. So I think we just have to get the vaccines to work and uh, there are going to be so many opportunities for you. So take advantage of Chef May. Uh, take advantage of all that she knows. And she knows a great deal because she's traveled the world. She's done all kinds of things. So pick her brain to do that. So then when things break open again, you'll be, you won't have a, job, a problem at all in finding a fun and exciting job. Well, thank you to Chef John and uh, for that compliments. My head's getting bigger already. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah, you noticed that. We're going to have lots of fun when everything's uh, open out and when we come back on campus in person again. All right, next will be Toby. Uh, hello, uh, I want to wonder how important is the tourism and hospitality industry to the local economy? It's kind of similar to uh, George's question, but. Well, as I mentioned, it's critical to the local economy. And it's been, it's been so sad to see so many people both put out of work or furloughed or something like that. Hotels that can't open, um, it, you know, just fun things to do like uh, paddling on the river or whatever it is that all of that listening to good music uh, going to clubs that kind of stuff all of that has been shut down uh, and it, it, it was the lifeblood of life in Sonoma County so but again I want to remind you that when we get past this and we will uh, there are going to be so many opportunities for you thank you Toby um Savannah, are you the last uh, Q&A uh, speaker? Hi, it's such an honor to be able to meet such a renowned chef as yourself. And my question was... Oh, that and me... I'll get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> be nice. <laughs> so ahead, what I... made you want to pursue a career in culinary arts and what advice would you give to a young aspirant such as myself, who is also interested in this career? It's a, it's a really good question. I, as I mentioned in the beginning, I didn't, I ended up being in this career sort of later in life. I wasn't, I didn't spend my time in France uh, learning to cook and all that stuff until I was in my late twenties, early thirties or something. So I came to it very late. So the advantage for you is that you're young and can, pack in a whole lot more uh, experience than I did. Um, but I, I think, it, I, well, I think maybe that's the answer is just 
go for as many things as you can. I tell young culinarians, those who think they want to cook or be involved in cooking in some way, is to work for as many different chefs as you can. Uh, one of the traditions in France is that you would work, uh, it was called take a stage, you would take a course, and you would go work in a different restaurant each year. And the idea there is that you would learn what that restaurant does, you would learn what the chef does, and then the next year you would go someplace else and you would add to that, uh, to that experience. And I think that's almost the same thing here. You don't have to change every year but work for as many people as you can, especially the people that you admire, the people that you think are doing good work. Does that help? All right, I think, thank you all of you who uh, asked those wonderful questions. Uh, thank you for participating in this interview with Chef John Ash and um, yeah. Hopefully, and we will discuss this uh, topic again on, uh, next time when we meet in class, okay? And uh, thank you all. And now let Brendan, uh, you can take over the uh, Zoom. Thanks. Yeah, I, you know, one thing I want to touch on is uh, I, I'm doing other uh, hospitality and tourism-based activities. And in a discussion with somebody from Sonoma County Tourism, the, the marketing organization that markets our area to the rest of the world, she was specifically saying that because of how our hospitality and tourism work here in Sonoma County, people come for a lot of the outdoor activities, right? It's the, it's the rolling hills, it's the vineyards, it's the hiking, it's the river. And, and um, because of that, unlike say a, a more dense city center, our area, as far as the tourism goes, is bound to um, rebound faster than most of the rest of California. So when when Chef John was talking about how after the pandemic, you know, it starts to subside and we get this vaccine going, how these jobs are going to come skyrocketing back. And I just want to reiterate that because it, we are probably going to be coming back sooner than the re like Sonoma County sooner than the rest of California because of how our hospitality and tourism is based on more outdoor activities, which makes people a little bit more safer. And that, so if they're going to be taking a vacation, they're probably going to be coming here before they go to Disneyland, for example. So um, yeah, thank you. I just want to say thank you as well um, to Chef John Ash. Thank you also, Chef May, for you and your students. Um, Chef, I, I am going to ask one last question, and it was going to be to leave the students with a piece of advice, uh, but Savannah asked that question. So, so I'm going to actually change it up a little bit. You had mentioned that um, working hard is, is one of the best skills to have in this industry. I'm wondering if you could just leave us with one more general soft skill, whether it's, you know, um, whether it's uh, curiosity or... Um, whether it's like, you know, the ethics of it, like what is one soft skill that you think is kind of critical for, the, for somebody to be successful in the hospitality industry? Right, that's a, that's a, that's a good and big question. You know, the, I, I wanna say that the working hard thing, that sounds like your father or your grandfather talking to you. Of course, you have to work hard no matter what you decide to do or just how, how you decide to uh, spend your time. Um, but I, th I think it is to have that, and you mentioned it, that insatiable curiosity. That's why I say go work for as many different people as you can uh, that you admire, that you like what they're doing, uh, and learn from them. Because everybody has their own way of doing something. And so it's that curiosity, what, why do they do it this way? Why is that food prepared in this particular way? Why are those ingredients that I've never heard of uh, important? That whole thing, I mean, it's a, it's a lifelong learning experience. You don't stop going to school, no matter what, even me. Great, thank you so much. Yep. Right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. And um, I think that's a great place to wrap up. So we'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks, you guys.